What up, y'all? It's your boy, Polo Cuts SD. Welcome back to another episode of Off The Clipper 2023, baby. Much love to everybody watching. Welcome back. This is a whole new year. We're starting off with a bang. I am right here with the crew. My boy, the one and only. Yeah, man, he rocks. In the building, baby. You already know who I got to the left of me, my boy. Yes, sir. Cheapy. That barber cheapy in the building, baby. That barber cheapy. Yes, sir. Today, we got a dope-ass guest. My fucking dopest of the dopest out there in the fucking field, baby. You already know what it is, my boy, Robert Castellanos, hey. baby. What up, what, up? what up, big dog? How are you, homie? Good, bro, you? Good dog. You know, fucking first episode of the year. Fuck. What, pe- what episode is this? Probably like we're almost almost at 90, I think. 90? Oh, 90. 90. Yeah. 10 episodes away from 100. First episode of 2023. We got a fire ass guest today, bro. Um, Welcome, bro. You know you're at home. This is this is home for you. You know every time you come to San Diego, bro, this is where you can fucking come, get cleaned up, freshed up, kick it with the boys and shit. Um, yeah. So yeah, man. Great fucking. What a great fucking way to start the year, dog. Uh, I'm super excited. Hopefully we can chop it up, and you know, uh, all the people that don't know you and all the people that do can learn a little bit about yourself and um, just chop it up. Oh yeah, I want to say I appreciate you having me, Polo. I mean, Hell yeah! I've been knowing you since I was sixteen, so I mean yeah. you've been keeping me clean every time I come to SD. So that's that's crazy, bro. That's one thing that's 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 pretty fucking like mind blowing. You know, like me and Manny. I mean, Cheapy's seen you already too for for a few years, but like me and Manny have like really like seen you from like full. You went from being a little kid dog to now a grown ass man to play, playing pro. You know, like playing fuck. You went from playing in TJ. Fucking training with David to now fucking you're in the MLS, bro. Like, oh, bro, it, feel, it feels so real. I mean, I remember last time, like, first person ever told me it was Teddy, David's old, uh, David's younger brother was like, yo, I, I needed a haircut. He was like, bro, I got a guy come polo. I was like, all right, for sure. And I came with like four of my boys. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. And then since then, it's just been history. Hell yeah, bro. I, and I always appreciate that too, dog. You guys always show love. Like, whenever another one of you guys is, uh, you know, um, fellow players and shit uh that comes out here you guys always send them to me and or to the guys you know uh, i appreciate that because there's not a lot of people that are like that bro like for some reason you know i i i got homies that know other people that they could send me fucking and they just i don't know they some people just don't got that connection or like that network that love you know that that you guys have shown to us and shit and i really appreciate that bro no of course i mean every time like everybody that comes to sd that that's our boys just like I mean, it's it's more about you because like we send them, we are like they're like, oh, who do you have as a barber here? We'll be like Polo, and it's just like when they come in with you, like every time we see them after, like I practice stuff, they just have like positive things. So fuck yeah, hell yeah, yeah. yeah. that's dope to hear, man. Uh, for everybody that doesn't know you, dog, um, tell us. Uh, obviously, your name is Robert Castellanos. I already mentioned you're a soccer player. Um, let them know a little bit about yourself, your background, where you're from. You know, um, how long you've been playing and shit like that. Just give them a little info, and you know. Yeah, like Polo said, um, my name is Robert Castellanos. i um, raised and born in Palmdale, California. Uh, I came down to San Diego when I was like 14. Um, was trying out at Cholos. Uh, started my career there in Cholos. And then I ended up coming to San Diego for, for two years. That's when I ended up meeting David, Teddy, and then I'm meeting Polo, everybody here. And then, yeah, that's when I kind of started getting connections here and just kind of growing a little bit more in San Diego. And then... Um, I signed my first pro deal in Mexico with a team called Atlas in Guadalajara. And then from there, I just kind of played a couple years in Mexico, came back to the States, um, played, played with a couple teams here like Galaxy, Houston, RGV. And then uh, right now, currently, I was at um, Nashville. Are you, you're going back to Nashville too or no? Uh, or this still- upcoming year will be pending, so we're still looking. My agent's kind of moving me around right now, so... Uh, I'll know like in a week or so where nice. I'll, be, where I'll be headed. Nope. Damn, hopefully you're somewhere close, dog, because I want to go see you play, dog. I already told you. I mean, even if you're in Nashville, bro, I'm going to fucking take, I'm going I'm to for sure catch a flight this season because I want to go check you out. I'm pretty sure these fools will go yeah, with I'd, me. I'd be down to go to Nashville to go see you play, and then I hear it's cracking out there, too. Oh, the city's crazy out yeah, there. Yeah, like, I hear it's super lit. I mean, for me, those two years I was in Nashville, like, for sure, like, top cities. That I just was like, bro, this feels like home. There's something to do every day was San Diego and then Nashville. Like, the only thing with Nashville would be raining, like, unco- like consistently, like, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. You don't even know what day is going to rain, but it'll be hitting. Yeah. Like, but besides that, bro, there's so much to do. The nightlife is beautiful. Um, food's great over there. Culture, you know, it's, it's well-rounded. So, 
you'll have a good time out there. Yeah, I used to think of Nashville like uh, I used to think it was more of like a con- like countryish, but like you told me last time that they there it's a it's a big city. No, right? no, yeah, like I remember what was it twenty end of twenty twenty when I was going twenty twenty one, my gym was like, yo, bro, like um you got you got a contract coming up from Nashville, like you know it's it's depending and everything. I was like Nashville, like where am I going? You know, I was like, bro, <laughs> yeah. all I remember first thing when he said Nashville, I was like country music and yeah but, but once i got there bro i was like i was in shock like the culture was way different like obviously that country music this and that and the third but overall like it's really diverse and and the nightlife is something that for me i was like going out to dinners you know going to downtowns um seeing diverse like people out there and i was just like wow like this is yeah. this is way different when people think of nashville yeah like, fuck yeah dude so um shit let's let's start it off i want to i want to start it off bro with your with your uh, young, like when you know your 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 young years, bro. When you fucking first, when you're 14 and you come out here to San Diego, you leave Palmdale, and uh, you come out here to you come to Mexico or you come to San Diego first. I went uh Mexico first, and you you were with Cholos. Yeah, I went for a trout. So like my team from Palmdale, we had uh we had a scrimmage against the U15s in Cholos, and we're a pretty decent team, you know, and um. So we come out here, you know, we're all hype. We're about to play, like, uh, the youth academies of professional teams. So, like, Pondo's a little city in the desert, you know. We yeah. Don't, we, don't really, uh, we don't really have that kind of environment or competition often. So when we went out there, it was just, like, something to prove. Uh, we went out there, and uh, once we started playing everything, you know, we, we first five, ten minutes, we are doing very good. And it just showed, like, the difference, you know, like, yeah. of, of competition, of what they get exposed to, of, of what kind of determination and grit teams in Mexico had at that time and we started playing and 15 20 minutes later you know being one goal two goals three goals and we ended up losing that game 8-0 Fuck. so it just we're a very good team out here but we went to Mexico and we got kind of humbled you know we had a, like a good starting 11 we had good quality players but overall like the development in Mexico at that time was just more superior they're exposed to like more difficult environments and they just wanted it more you know yeah. so we came there with kind of like oh, we're just going to come play soccer. They came out there and played like, oh, we got something to prove. So they kind of just balled, us, balled out that game and they beat us. And yeah. that gave us kind of that perspective like, wow, like there's a lot more out there. Than yeah, fuck yeah. Can you, can you say like, I mean, I used to play soccer in Mexico like heavy, you know, fucking. Uh, but when I made that jump from here to Mexico, like I noticed the difference in the fucking speed and like in the, in the speed of the, of the game, you know, like when we were, when I would play out here, uh it just felt a lot slower than when i moved out there over there it was like super fast and then another reason maybe too because uh the fields that i was playing in it was a uh, like all dirt fields you know like um but like even when i did play like in turf like the fucking pace of soccer over there was just a lot faster do you think this do you agree with me on that or not? no no for sure at that time it was just like Overall, I felt like the soccer in Mexico was developing way faster. Yeah. Obviously, now it's it's controversial because I think soccer in the U.S. has developed faster as well and is catching up to Mexico. Even at moments, you know, it, it is superior. Um, last year, I think five M- uh, Mexican uh, yeah, MX teams came to the U.S. and you know they didn't get the results they wanted. You know, U.S. teams beat them. Obviously, the U.S. Versus Mexico, U.S. has got the last uh, three games, if I'm correct, um, over Mexico. You're, so, ta- you're talking about the the, the Mexican National League, yeah, the Mexican League. So last year, f- they had we had a scrimmages, uh, uh-huh. like friendly matches. So five Mexican uh, Liga MX teams came to U.S. Oh, okay. to play five MLS teams, and I think out of the five games, three of them the MLS teams won, and two of them got tied. Oh so shit! So overall, like uh, the U.S. teams have have competed and have done very well yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh kind of out working and out playing mexican teams or adapting to that play style and then with the national team too you know um the u.s national team has gotten the last couple of games over mexico so back then i think when i first went to mexico the goal was to go to mexico and break out in there because like you said soccer out there when i was you know growing up in mexico it's faster i think players out there don't have that much opportunity so everybody that shows up to on the field it's like grinding. It's, it's grinding and, yeah, it's, yeah. and they have that kind of mentality like this is all they got so when i got put in that environment it changed my perspective because it was giving me that insight of like wow like obviously i don't come from a lot but i come from more than what they have yeah, yeah, yeah. so when i went there like i had to go on i had to be in their shoes and see like okay like this is all i have left yeah you know, i gotta make something out of it yeah and competing with those guys every single day because like 
being there wasn't guaranteed. Every day, players are coming in from all over Mexico to Fuck. try out. So you, not only did I have some of the Americans coming in from, from the United States going to Mexico to do what I was doing, but we had all over Mexico come out and try out for those teams as well. Because, like, luckily for me, I have double nationality. So I could play in the U.S. and Mexico, but those guys only had Mexico. Yeah. So they had everything to lose when they come to train. Yeah. So having the mentality, like, I'm competing in these guys, like, day in and day out, really changed my perspective growing up and just kind of molded me to have more determination, more discipline grit, and the discipline to go further and further. Yeah. With, you know, like I got to keep doing more than this guy's doing. Yeah. This guy had rip cleats. This guy had no money to eat, you know, and he's still out working me. Like I got to change it. You know, I got to yeah. change something up on my, on my system, on my routine because this guy is out working me. So yeah. having that at a young age really helped me prepare. So when I came back to the States, my mentality kind of switched and I was like, okay, this is what I need to do to keep advancing and keep being ready for whatever comes next. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I could definitely see that dog. Cause your discipline is outmatched. Like I could definitely see it just from the, like from, from me seeing you as a kid to how I see you now, I could definitely see the growth that, that, that you gained from going out there to coming back. And then like just the maturity of your, of how you carry yourself, how you, um, you know, how you, how you're on the field and all that stuff, which are how you, do, how you take care of your, your spot in the, in, in, in your soccer team and shit like that. Like I could definitely see the maturity that you've, that you've grown throughout the years and shit. That shit's for sure. Uh, I mean, I, I, I got to salute you for that one, bro. You're fucking, you're killing the dog. And like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of kids that would come with you, with you and your other homies that were all, you guys were all playing soccer together and the Cholos and not all of them kept going, you know, and, the the few that did kept kept that few the, the few of you that did c keep going was because of that 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 discipline the determination which in this case you know you you probably had it but you just went out there and you just fucking like it elevated even more you know no yeah of course I think like you like you said it uh, we came out with I think at that time was ten Americans and you know you kind of met most of them and. It just is part of life, and it's the same thing with you. Like, I bet when you were growing up doing this barber stuff with a lot of barbers, like, yeah. everybody's end goal was to do what you're doing now. And you've exactly. been in difficult situations. You have been in parts that you had to kind of find a way out or out grind people or just keep pushing it because, like, I've said in previous interviews and I've, I've, I've always kind of preached it, but being honest, I wasn't always the best one out of my, my group of friends. You know, yeah. I wasn't the most talented. I wasn't the guy that was like, oh, you know, this guy's going to make it. You know, some people believed in me. But at the end of the day, I really didn't hear it. I just knew it myself. You know, I was yeah. like, you know what, like, this is all I got and this is what I want, you know. So I just gave it 110% every time. Fuck, like, yeah. And I just focused on what I could control. Like, a lot of us, like, we focus and we try to, like, take care of everything else that we couldn't control better than taking care of what we can control, you know. Yeah. And once I started getting a hang of that and I was like, let me just focus on what I could control and be ready whenever an opportunity comes that kind of helped me develop and grow faster and outpaced other people around me because there was guys way better than me or, you know, were projected to go further than me. But as long as I just focused on my own thing in my own lane and then I was just ready for whenever the opportunity came, that was why I think I went a little bit further than the rest of the guys because it just comes down to that. Or as well, like some guys don't want to wait that long, you know? Like yeah. when I came back from Mexico from first division to the U.S., I had to go back to second division for four years. If you tell me bring it back and you're like it's gonna take you four more years to go back to first division yeah i would be like no way like i'm not waiting four years yeah, yeah. but when i got in the process i was like all right it is what it is like let me just grind it out and i did it and most of the guys you know sometimes it's hard to have that mindset to stay locked in for yeah, yeah, yeah. and they like, get discouraged and yeah shit. it's like it's like you if they tell you like oh to open your first shop be 10 years like you yeah. tell a person in the beginning they're gonna they're gonna lose motivation they're gonna be like yo that's so far but what helped me with that was stop focusing so much on the angle. Like I knew I was going to get there. Yeah. Maybe I didn't know when, because obviously timing, you you can't time everything, you know, you just got to be ready. Yeah. So I just focused on what I had in front of me and just kept growing and growing and just absorbing as much as information as I can of the game and what I need to do and just trying to help myself and know what I have to know to be ready. And that got me, that got me ready for the opportunities that came. And I just think that that's what pushes people to go very far in whatever career they want or accomplishments is just like focus on you and control what you can control and when the opportunities do come be ready for them because i feel like a lot of us pray for opportunities or we preach these opportunities that we want and then when they come we fumble them or like yeah, we're yeah. not ready for them yep. and then we blame everybody else and it's just like 
no, like look That's at yourself, crazy. look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I wasn't ready for him, you know. So yeah. like, I, I, I'm not saying don't pray for these opportunities because we should always pray, we should always preach, and and you don't give glory to God. But at the same time, like, what are you doing for yourself to be ready? Yeah. You know? And I think that's what helped me in the long run. You gotta get, you gotta yeah. get ready, basically, like, so yeah. you can the opportunity comes. That's fucking crazy, bro. You hit that shit right on the head. That goes for anything. Um, don't forget your thought too, Chibi. What you want to say? Um, but that that goes for everything, you know, like, um, yeah, you got to put in that time and that, that yeah, effort dog. and. A lot of that's that's a, that's the thing like that I think the, people lack it's like on. They you know? say you know if you if you stay ready, you don't gotta get ready. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. You know? Got to put in that time when nobody's looking, nobody's watching. Just be there and you know work and, hard and, at what you know whatever you're trying to accomplish. And like you said, you know it's like you do the things you can control. Like you can control what you eat. You yeah, know exactly. when you work out, how much sleep you get. You know what time you wake up and shit. Who who you surround yourself with? You know those are things you could. You know, no, that control, shit, you know, yeah. and that'll motivate you to give you more power to do what you want to do. You know how tough you know? that is, dog, as a fucking teenager, though, bro? Like, imagine, like, for us that we're fucking 30 years old, bro, or, like, yeah. you know, like... Well, I mean, our yeah. age now, yeah, for like sure. how hard it is, how hard it is for us to just say like, oh, like today I can't fucking drink or I can't party because tomorrow I have to wake up early to go. Mm -hmm. I don't know, fucking yeah, it's a, it's do a, something. And you're like, plan. oh, like sure. your homies come around and they're like, hey, fool, what's up? You want to have a beer or like, you know, and you're like, uh, fuck, like, you know then what? I do. Where, but that's where like discipline exactly. comes into play. But, that's uh, what you really want. Then that's but, what. But imagine this. Imagine like Robert being a fucking. Like yeah. a 16, 17 year old, oh, yeah, bro, yeah, the yeah. fucking guts you gotta have to be able to say, nah, dude, I gotta, I gotta practice tomorrow. Like, how, like the fact what, how you like just what, like what were we doing at seventeen? You know? Yeah, yeah, like, like exactly. Like me, bro, at seventeen, dog, I was fucking popping Molly, bro. I was fucking partying my ass off, and like, bro, at seventeen, I was already three years in partying in TJ. Like, yeah, yeah, like hard, bro. I heard like, about you, man. I, 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 I drinking the whole. I never group. did anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, bro, like I wasn't. And this is the thing, though. Like, I was playing soccer too, and I was. And I thought I was going to go far in soccer, you know, like I was playing third division professional in TJ, you know, and but I just fucking part like me. I was I didn't have that where you had, you know, that discipline, you know what I'm yeah, saying? That, so that extra little drive. To yeah. Kind of be like, you know what? Like, but I got to stay disciplined like that, and that, work that's it. that's fucking tough. And that goes to show, like for everybody that's watching, like if you guys ever fucking want to fucking do something and it doesn't matter what it is, it could be fucking soccer, a sport. it could be a sport. It could be a profession. It could be a fucking trade. It could be anything, you know, even if you're just learning from home or whatever on your own type shit, like you got to put in the work. It's just like how they say when you fucking start off, when you start a new job, like you always start at the bottom, you know, and if you don't, you probably got plugged in and you got lucky, but you still got to put in the work to keep going up. You never yeah, want to be comfortable. And then those people always fail because they don't learn the steps that you learn yes. from the journey. Yes. You know? uh -huh. And it's yeah. like you're put in a position. You're like, what? Yeah, like, and it, and also it helps out too, like with who you surround yourself with. Yeah. You know, they, you got to have good influences around you. And oh you yeah, for sure. People around you, yeah. people who are on the same path and and um, you know, uh, we're exactly where you want to get to. You know, like you want to have those same people around you all going towards kind of that same similar goal in such yeah. a way. Just like they say, you know, you want to fucking. You hang around with fucking millionaires, with four millionaires, you're about to be the fifth one, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're definitely going to soak you, up knowledge. Exactly. You, like You'll be better. Uh, so you go, how does how does that work? When you say that you uh, you came, you went from being, you went Atlas professional first division, and then you come back over here to the States, and then they tell you, okay, you're going to come, but you're going to go to second division? Yeah. How was, uh, so when you're going through that process, are you thinking like, uh, like fuck, like is it is it like hard for you to decide whether oh I, I want to do it or not? Like I want to stay over here, better fuck that. Like I'm gonna stay in first division, or um, was it easier for you to just say you know what fuck it I'll go through these four years and you know let's I'll get to first division eventually. Um, was that is there is there like a besides like the mental battle that comes along with that? Is there like a like a big like I don't want you don't have to talk about numbers, but like as far as the pay, was it like a big difference? Like a big step down where you're like, fuck, like like I have a lifestyle to kind of keep up. No, with yeah, I, I think overall it, it was a it was something to digest, and it wasn't it wasn't something easy to digest quick, you know, because 
obviously you practice all your life and you achieve, you know, one of your goals and you're very happy. But at the end of the day, it comes down to like how fast you could adapt. Yeah. So at that time, the opportunity was given to me. I seized it. I did everything I could do in my part. Obviously, some things behind the scenes kind of messed up my opportunity in Mexico at that time. So I was only there for a short time with Atlas. Coming back to the U.S., like you said, like at that time period, all the teams were already in preseason, all the first teams. Um, obviously, I didn't get enough games over there in Mexico for, for me to build a resume where I come to the States and I'm like, I'm this guy, you know. Oh, so I, I was still building my career up. So a lot of teams were interested in me, but were scared about the risk. Uh, I had a couple of teams, obviously, at that moment was like Portland Timbers and Galaxy that I was very interested in. And um, yeah, obviously, I had some people in my corner that were telling me, you know, some information and obviously had the knowledge before I did because they've been through these steps. And I was I was young in my career, but it's very hard because a lot of people at moments you reach this goal, you reach this height and it's very hard for you to like check your ego and yeah. for you to be like, OK, sometimes you got to kind of hit a different route to get to the end point again because it's not always just a straight line yeah, yeah, yeah. there's always gonna be ups and downs it's just like what you are good at adapting and that's for me like the biggest thing in soccer and in, in, in sports i think a lot of athletes at a young age are afraid to adapt because we are so confident and we are so like strong with our own opinion of like oh i'm really good at this and this is me and this is how i play or this is who i am and i'm not letting nobody change me but just like at the end of the day you have to adapt to the team you're going to, to the coach that wants you to play, and yeah. what system you want to play. And you will fail consistently if you don't learn how to adapt in your environment. So you got to be a player that comes in and is like, all right, what you need from me, and I'm going to deliver. And at that age, it showed me because I came into the USL, and I was like, mm, I played in Mexico. You know, I was in first division. I came to the States, and I was like, I'm going to run the league. You know, I'm, I'm going to do one year with Galaxy, second team, and I'm going to break into the first team again. You know, I was training with the first team, playing with the second team. And I was like, this is going to be easy for me, you know. And I came and I got humbled quick. You know, I was playing games yeah. and I got exposed and I was like in shock. I was like, yo, like. These guys are playing at the same fucking. Yeah. Like and I, I came with, you know, at that moment, I was a little bit big headed. And, but I'm so glad. I'm, I'm very happy for those moments because I think those moments are what makes me who I Fuck am today. Yeah. So, yeah, I came to the USL and I was like, whoa, damn, this is this is fast. This yeah. is good players here. Like, like this is not walking the park. Well, like you said, I mean, like you said, too, uh, you 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 didn't go you didn't necessarily not make it to first division because you weren't fucking good enough it was that you got here kind of a little late the preseason had already started and then you didn't have enough fucking enough uh uh shit to show like show show for you know like you didn't have enough uh stuff on your resume like yeah. you didn't play enough out there you know you didn't play too long so i mean if shit probably would have went right out there and you had more time and then you if you would have came out here a little earlier you probably would have just went straight to fucking first division same thing with other people that are playing in the usl yeah. league with yeah. you you know they're probably in the same situation or they fucking went through something where they were not they they're meant to be in the first yeah the first division but they they're there because of some x fucking reason you know exactly and that's so. what it comes down to like a lot of us have the capacity, have the abilities. We have it all to be at the highest levels or whatever you want to achieve in life. But just like there's things in life that will derail you. There's going to be opportunities given to others and not you. And it's just like what you're going to do about it. Yeah. You know? And that's where it comes down to. Like when I went to Galaxy, I was like, damn it. I got smacked in the face. And I think the best teacher in life, it's life itself. Like I came here and I got smacked in the face. And it's like, yo, like, like put your feet back on the ground. Like get to grind again you know yeah. so start you know start fresh again so i did my first year at galaxy and it, i learned a lot you know i got injured I, I i fractured one of my bones in my my leg and you know things weren't going so well for me but at the same time i feel like the most growth i've ever had is through all my difficulties in life you know and i think one of my best like things in life is like i think we all have sad stories like everybody here has sad yeah, stories. yeah you know? fuck yeah but for me i see it as like what do you do with yours like, what are you about to do with your sad story? Your outcome, you know? Yeah, because everybody could, could complain. Everybody could say, oh, this was taken from me or this happens to me. Or, or you know, my, my dad this, my mom that, my, my parents are separated, my brother. You know, everything, X factors in life, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. You yeah. know, are you going to whine and complain about it? Or are you going to use that as motivation? Or are you going to use that for you to feel, to push you forward? And that's what I hold down deep in me is just like, okay, everything that happens for me happens for a reason. So I could show the world and show people that, are following me or people that are going through similar things that I am at, at my age when I was back then, 
like we could do it you know you could overcome these things it might be dark it's gonna be long sometimes I go more about discipline over motivation because I think motivation is a spark. Like you can watch a video right now on TikTok and get motivated and go oh, to the yeah. gym, but tomorrow you won't go again. You know, like, yeah. motivation is good to have, but discipline overcomes all that, you know? So I think the more you are consistent with yourself on that discipline part, like knowing when to say no to certain things, like enjoy your life. Yeah. But know when you have to work and know when you enjoy life. Yeah, and once you, you find the balance of that, really. once you find the balance of that, I think you, you'll be on the right path to kind of achieve what you want. One of my boys told me fucking when I was uh, actually my my personal trainer, he's like, he said, motivation comes and goes. Commitment is what's more important. You know, you got to be committed. And uh, that's basically what you're saying. You know, that's 100 percent. There's a time and place for everything. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I want to get into I want to get into like uh, more into like um, like like jaw dropping moments when you became like professional and shit. What what were the when when you first started playing ball professionally? Uh, did you have any moments where you were playing against a soccer player that you were actually looking up to like throughout the years before and stuff like that? Did you ever run it? Did you ever play against someone or with the player that you actually fucking idolized? You know, in your in your life? No, yeah, for sure. I think my first one was uh, Rafa Marquez. No, uh, man, is yeah. Way. Was when I was so when I was uh, when I was at Nomads, eighteen. I was turning eighteen. Where I was gonna go back to Cholos, uh-huh. and at that time I had a little buzz, and I got called into the national team for the U twenties. So like it was, it was just Mexico or U.S. Uh, U.S. Okay. So the U.S. was gonna go to U twenty World Cup, right? They're making their squad, and um, at that moment, the coach Tab Ramos saw some interest in me, and, and I've never been called to national team. You know, I've I I consider myself a player that's kind of been under radar a lot. You know, I'm a late bloomer. So my last season with Nomads, you know, I, I, I performed very well. Uh, the team around me, you know, we we did very good. We did a very good tournament. We're the underdog. So we had a lot of spotlight because we were beating teams that weren't supposed to lose to us. Yeah. So we're representing San Diego and Nomads at a very high level because every other team were affiliated with MLS teams, had help from MLS teams. And we we're just a regular academy from San Diego. Oh, and shit. they were just like, yo, these guys are coming out here and like beating these MLS teams and this and that and the third. So we go to the final four. I get called into a national team camp, you know, uh, after my academy season. I was supposed to go back to Cholos, but at that time, my agent calls me to go, Atlas is interested in you. And Atlas is like, my family's from Guadalajara. Yeah. And Rafa Marquez is like the biggest icon in Mexico. Fuck yeah. You know, I, like, for sure. And like, All the way. I, I play center back. So Rafa Marquez, that's his like main position. And at that moment, I like, it was surreal. I was like, yo, you're lying to me. Like, First team, they're like, yeah, first team. And Cholos was offering me a U20 contract, which at the same time, I was I was blessed. I just wanted to go to Mexico and make make a name for myself. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, when I came back from the national team, my agent's like, we're flying you out the next day to, or like the next couple of days to Guadalajara. And I was like, okay. So I go out there. I still, in the moment, didn't believe it was first team because yeah. I was like, I just came back from playing academy. Yeah. And prior to that, I was, you know, watching the Mexican national team with my parents. You know, my brother, my dad, we were watching, like, Ochoa, yeah. Rafa Marquez, all those, you know, yeah. legendary, legendary players. This was, what, four years ago? This was 2016. Six. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, six probably, years yeah, ago. So probably, probably seven. Yeah. Okay. So, probably, it was what? When was the last World Cup? 2018, right? Uh, No, no. It was, so, the cycle was 2014, 2018. Yeah, it was uh, two years before that. So, 2016, oh, okay, okay. the next World Cup of 2018. Okay. So, yeah, it was, like, and their guy, those guys were in their prime, or, like, you know, coming off their prime. And, um, yeah, so I fly to Guadalajara, and they were training, you know, as the first team, and then the U-20s, you know, they were going to play a scrimmage, and the, the whole, the coaching staff on the first team and the president, everybody wanted to watch me play. Like, let's see if this kid got it. What him. the fuck? So my agent goes, all right, like, you're here. Like, put your cleats on. I start putting my cleats on, and I thought I was going to go with the U-20s. But then the coach calls me over from the first team. Is like, yo, you're like, you're with us. And I was like, yo, no what? Damn, that's fucking sick. way. So then I was like kind of shaking, you know, I was like so nervous. And then um, so I go to the starting team with the first team and they're just like, all right, we're going to play a scrimmage, you know, 60 minute scrimmage, 30 minute, 30, two halves of 30 minutes. Are these guys, are these guys that are these guys pretty friendly or are these guys no, kind of like just, hazing? Like they kinda, just look at me like, like who the hell is this dude? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, at who's you, this like, kid? Oh, yeah. And you look small. You look young as fuck at the time. I had, bro, I had no facial hair i look like a little kid and <laughs> showing up to mexico like i'm telling you like that place in sports is a doggy dog world like, oh yeah people yeah, see yeah. you and yeah. especially if you're american they're like 
what are you doing here? They they like, think you, they they think of you like you're here to take my spot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And out there, like they gotta put food on the table. You know, I'm coming out there to chase a dream. They're putting yeah. food on the table, so it's a whole different like perspective to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody's looking at me like, all right, who's this? So then we start playing and. And I was so nervous, but then at that moment, I was just like, I don't know, it's just I, sometimes when I have moments like that, I talk to myself and I'm like, all right, this is what I prayed for. This is what I got my myself ready for. This is what I've done my last uh, two, three years. It's time in, to shine. Oh, yeah, like, is it now or never, you know? I play that game and I actually do very well, you know? I perform well. Um, I was connecting really, really good with the first team players. And one thing I think one of my best characteristics is like, I'm very vocal. So I was telling the veteran players, like, Hey, yo, tuck in chef. And they just like turn around, look at me like, yo, like shut up. Yeah. You know, at that moment. In a good way too, though, yeah. I'm guessing like, yeah, like they look at me like, yo, this kid is like confident, yeah. but like, don't overdo it. But at that moment I was like, I got something to prove. Like I'm going to play high. Like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So yeah, the game ends. I, I think, I, I think that's probably one of the best performances I've had. Like of just like, go do something with it and then after my I, the game's over i go pull it to the side i'm dead i'm tired bro like i swear i was gassed and then my agent goes hey you know come um yo what the hell what was that and i was like hella scared i was like i played back he's like you killed it like i i did not stop hearing them say your name up there and i was like okay that's good Fuck you know yeah. Hell yeah. and then the president and the coach comes up to my agent and is like hey you know like bring him to the office we want to sign him Oh, and I was like, shit. You know? So at that moment, it was like kind of jaw dropping me because, like, I just finished playing with, like, with Rafa Marquez in front of me, you know, his. Oh, so you were playing yeah. with him with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, in a scrimmage game. Like, he was, I was playing the full starting, the starting 11 for Atlas. At yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, these, these, these players were in front Wait, of Wait, Rafa Marquez was playing with them? Yeah, he came, he was that's when he. When he came back to retire. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Were you playing against oh. the first team? No, I was with, the first with them. Oh, you were with the first team? Yeah. Okay. Fuck, bro. I would have fucking shit my pants, fool. Yeah, I look and I was just looking at these players that have been watching the Mexican League. You know how fucking insane that is to say, like, that yeah. you actually got to, like, ball up with Rafa Marquez, bro? Yeah. That's fool. Rafa Marquez is the fucking, like, one of the best defenders of Barcelona, bro. Like, yeah, of, uh, of, like of is Europe. Is that like yeah. Chibi playing with like Kobe Bryant or something? <laughs> oh, straight, like, <laughs> yeah, straight that's up. That's all exactly. Yeah, yeah, straight up, yeah. straight up, straight yeah. up, straight up. That's exactly what it is, dog. Like, bro, Rafa Marquez is like the fucking. He's an icon, bro. Mexican yeah. icon. Like, he's the fucking Mexican that went the furthest in history and saw. So well, yeah, no, well, not him and Guardado well, were up there. Guardado well, right him, now, the Hugo recent, Sanchez too. Hugo Sanchez too. I don't know who. Well, Hugo Sanchez was more of like a fucking. He would make goal, score goals, and he was yeah, big in that. Well, actually, fucking Rafa Marquez too, but he yeah, was a defender. But as a defender, yeah, Rafa Marquez for sure is the biggest staple. Yeah, Mexico. fuck yeah. So yeah, coming into that, like that's fucking insane. Going dog. from academy to like a professional environment was like crazy. I mean, and yeah, that experience happened. I ended up signing with Atlas after that, Sick. and starting off my career in Mexico a little bit. But for sure, that was probably one of the most uh, more moments where I was like, wow, like. This is so real, you know? And yeah. then the next one, um, obviously another player I think was, was was top for me and I've always looked at him was Giovanni Dos Santos at, at Galaxy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy was just so so saucy with the ball. So just... He was badass, He too. was just so carefree that when you see him play, you're just like, you just enjoy watching him. And then see him at training and just being around him, I was like, well, this guy really enjoys the sport, you know? Yeah. And then lastly, I think the person that I met that I feel like because sometimes when you're in this environment, like I'll say, like, when you're in this environment, you try not to be such a fanboy sometimes because you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm sharing the field. It's, it's, it's your job, you know? So you got to know when to do certain things and when not to. Yeah. And I know these guys get a lot of, like, love and a lot of things. So once you become, like, their kind of partners or, like, their teammates and stuff, like, you got to know, like, there's there's a border now. Like, if you show, if you're too much of a fanboy, like you, you just always show respect. You know, I respect all my all my uh, teammates and everything. But at the same time, it's like, okay, I'm a professional too, so it's just like, yeah, I'm younger than you, but like we share the same field. Yeah. So, yeah. so at that time, you can't fanboy a lot, but you're one of them as well. Like exactly, yeah, yeah. And you're just trying to make a name for yourself. You absorb all their knowledge. You you listen to them. You know, you get shit a lot from all the veterans, but it's a learning experience. But for sure, the the most recent one that I think uh, I met. Was Dave Beckham at the Miami, the owner from Miami? Yeah. Uh, after we played them last year, uh, he was on the field, and you know, I was, we finished up the game, and I, I was walking into the tunnel, and I, honestly, I didn't want a picture with him. You know, like obviously I wanted one, but like I, I we just lost the game. I wasn't gonna go up to him and be like, "Yeah, hey, can you get a picture." Yeah. So then I just wanted to say hi. You know, I've like seen this guy. He's just literally the icon of soccer. You know? Yeah. Fuck yeah. So then I'm like, all right, let me walk towards the tunnel. If he turns around and like kind of like looks my way, I'm just be like, put my hand up just to say hi. You know, and he turns around. You know, he has like a little posse around him, like his like his people. 
And he turns around and I'm like walking into the tunnel to go to the changing room. And I'm like, oh, hey, David. I call him David like <laughs> if I knew him, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, David. And he turns to you and I was like, hey, like my name's Robert Castellanos. I was like, nice to meet you. Honestly, all he had to do was like, oh, nice to meet you. And just like, yeah. but like he held a conversation with me and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And he's just like, oh, good game, blah, blah. You guys did very well. Like, unfortunately, you guys didn't get the result. And I was just looking at this guy. I was like, yo, this is so real. What? And Damn. at that time, our our um, our equipment manager uh -huh. wanted a picture. So I'm talking to oh, David. And shit. He, our equipment manager looks at me. He's like, you want a picture? And I'm like, inside of me, bro, I'm screaming. I'm like, fuck yeah, fool. Yeah. Hey. And, I, and I look at him I'm like, yeah. And I just. Good I, looking I look, out. Yeah, bro, I swear. <laughs> and I look at David and I'm like, I was like, yo, can I get a picture? He's like, oh, for sure. And I was like. Like the next time we get the picture, Hell bro, and yeah. I'm like, but the the crazy thing about this is, after I got the picture, whatever, um, and some of us got the picture, like equipment manager, like our our assistant, our assistant coach, and stuff like that, uh, our general manager. They don't like that shit, what? Well, it's just like we lost, we lost, that, huh? we lost like, that game, you know. But it's like, and Dave is the owner of the other club, you know. So it's just like you're taking pictures with the team we just lost to. So we get back that week into the into training, and then we have a meeting with our with our GM, our general yeah. manager, and he's like. He's pissed. Like, no. He's like pissed, you know? And he goes, I mean, he has all credit, you know, to be pissed. No, but, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, just, fuck yeah. But I'm just like, yo, at the end of the day, this is Dave Beckham. Like, this is this is for the sport. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure he would feel, I'm pretty sure he, him like inside, Kobe, he's like. It's like Corey Bryant in basketball, or like Michael Jordan. Yeah, I'm know? pretty sure. But, the, but to him, oh, yeah. he just like sees him like, the bit, oh, whatever, you know. Well, probably, I'm pretty sure he I, fucking I, wants I, a picture too. I, but yeah. then again, at the same time, when you're still, the owner or the yeah, president, you're like, man, fuck that other side, you know. Business. I could see both sides, but in the moment, I just, you know, it's just like. He was probably mad because you were smiling and shit. With him, you know, after the game, after you lost the game, you know what I mean. Yeah. But, but who, who wouldn't exactly. though? You know what I mean? Like, no, for sure. I think if I mean, hundred percent would have won. Nothing would have been brought up. Yeah, yeah, for but, sure. I mean, they tied. They like, made why it, you they, so happy, motherfucker? Oh, yeah. see, I was cheesing too. Fuck yeah. But the thing oh, yeah, was like, sure. after the game, you know, like obviously I'm smart. I'm not gonna go up to him, but like, what's up, dude? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I get the whole point. Like he he had he had a valid reason for him to be upset. But yeah, he brought us all into the in into the kitchen. I mean, to eating room room and he's like you know what you know this is this looks a shame on the club like how do you lose and go take pictures and obviously he wasn't naming us but we know who we were yeah and i'm like looking down like damn bro i'm about to get shredded right now so you know we we got our we got we got our shit to talk to you about that but overall i mean was it worth it did you ever uh, post a picture yeah. like couple after months, after you left two months later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two That's months right. later, bro. I was stressing, bro. I was like, no. Way. I mean, I posted my story. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, I gotta see that picture, fool, because I don't yeah, think I don't think you, I don't think you ever showed me that picture. No, bro. Let me see. That yeah, shit's yeah, I, 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 see it too. I was low key like, bro. But two but, months later, but you taller than him or not? Uh, let me see. Let me. Remember. Hey, but but I mean, at the end of the day, bro. Like, come on, dog. Like. When are you gonna get a moment a, like this? Yeah, you know? bro. Yeah. He, he's a fucking like. He's Worth one. Fucking legend. He's one. He's a legend. Exactly. That fool. I mean. Come on, dog. The, 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 I'm even I'm pretty you. sure even the president would he want was, a picture with bro, them too. He, he was just mad that this was like too happy about yeah. it. You know, like if it was, bit, it would have been like a hey. little smirk maybe yeah. or like and then, a and then another serious thing is, face. How many fucking other players took a picture with them? I think it was only it was a couple of us, but I think yeah, like obviously most of the guys that like got mad and went in because we had to do extra. Oh, runs. it's probably the OG fools that were yeah. like, hey, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, the well, the conversation got sparked because. Uh, the equipment managers that got the picture were sh like when I got my picture, like I, I didn't tell nobody, I didn't, you know. But the equipment managers and people that he got was it, hype, probably they were speaking about it. So then when the like got up to the got up to the GM, he's like, "All right, who else took pictures? Like, who the hell yeah. is taking pictures back Beckham? Like after the game we lost." Which is yeah. understandable, but yeah, not nah, like, for sure. But still, it's all good. I'm this pretty was, sure hey, this was gonna show, <laughs> this was gonna hey. show us the picture's gonna be hugging him yeah. and shit. Like, <laughs> hey, bro, my I'm boy. At the end of the day, that picture was all worth it, though. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shit, to get scolded for a little bit, for sure. But I mean, I mean, he's hey, he didn't snitch you out, player. so that's cool. Hey, um, yeah. have you have you been? Uh, so you've already played in Mex, and you're currently here in the U.S. Have you have you played in any other league besides Mexico and US or no? Uh no, I I've, I've only played um in Mexico in here. Okay. Are you Look at me Oh cheesy. shit, yeah. Hell oh. yeah. Yeah, food Jeez, looks the same, dude. bro. That's crazy. Bro, the food don't age at all. Yeah, he does it. That's crazy. I'm telling you, it was so hot in Miami. So like, many. That's like, crazy. That's sick, dog. Hey, can I ask you something? Yeah. What why do you guys wear those oh, those the vest, the bra? 
What is that? It's a catapult. So they put our GPS in the back. What, so that what? holds our GPS. Our GPS. It's like it tracks. Oh, for that line for the wall. No, no, yeah, our, our tracks are our running, our heart rate, everything. So, like in a game, you can't cheat. Like, we wore those. It's called a catapult. It's like a little sports bra. Like, yeah, they'll, they'll make fun of it when like players take off the shirts and like what. The I trip out on that shit. I'm yeah. like, what the yeah. fuck is well, that, that for? That's like the only thing we wear to track our our load in the game. How many meters we run? How fast our our most explosive run is? Our load? How high we jump? Like, bro, that tracks everything. So, like, if you say like you get exposed, like you be like, oh, I ran all this, like. They check your, they check your like your stats. They're like, no, you didn't, oh, bro. You didn't even cover like three third of the field, bro. What are you saying? Yeah. So you get exposed quick. Like they'll be like, bro, you didn't run enough. Like, what's wrong with you? Are you tired? So that's what we're. The oh damn, are. they're on you like bro. that. Everything damn, at that level gets it's it's modified. Yeah. Everything there is they, checked. They couldn't they couldn't put it like nowhere else, like in your shorts or like, bro, you know like that's the only, to that's your the only most effective way. Like because this, because this that one's like got, this is what I got right now. It's called the whoop. So okay. I got this right now during um during off season. Can I see? A yeah. suwoo? Or what? It's called a whoop. It's, 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 yeah. called, it's called a whoop. That, that was a for? track it's like your a, like alcohol and blood. It, it's, ah, this is like probably the most advanced thing. Like some of us use it in like in the pros. They like you could train with these because they're like very like thin. So you could, you know, you can't train with Apple Watch and stuff. Yeah. Or some places don't let you. But like the whoop is like. So whoop. Uh, yes, uh, bro. It's the thinking. most funniest <laughs> thing. Whoop. The whoop tracks your sleep, tracks your recovery, tracks that. Bro, like I'll show you. Is and it pretty accurate? Bro, it's the most accurate thing out there. And yeah. I'm not sponsored, so, you know, Whoop, if you see this. Man. Hit the boy we, up, please. We, you know, we, we about to tag expensive him, dog. memberships out here. Hit hey. us up. Hit us up. Bro, look, look. The Whoop tracks everything. So, like, it tells me, like, this is my load for today, 16.8. Day strain. My recovery, 74. My sleep. How many hours do I need to sleep to hit 100? When it, when it, what, recovery, what is that? Like, how like, long you sit down for and how, chill or what? So, uh, the training session I have and then the amount of hours in between my next session how much I rest. And if it's telling me like, oh, you need to rest a little bit more, I rest. So if it tells me like oh, if I'm overworking shit. or not. So resting is considered what? Sleep, sitting Sleep, down, chilling. chilling. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, moving. it's kind of like, a, it's yeah. kind of like having like a coach at all times with you. 100%. Well, it's like, it's a membership. So you pay, you pay every, oh, well, you pay yearly. And do your coaches like, kind of like. Yeah, this is the data. Like I'm saying, this data is like times two with the little band in the back. So that's what they see. They see to recover your sleep. So and I'm pretty sure that. they put it on your chest on your chest because it's tight and it's yeah. like accurate. It doesn't because yeah. if like how Chippy said, if they put it on your shorts, it'll probably move around yeah, more. Like, here, like in shit. a game at the moment, like I it train, could be dangerous I train or not. The whoop, and sometimes it gets like knocked off. Like it stays firm, but like some moments it gets hit. Oh, and, okay. You know, so that in the back is probably the most effective out of the way and non hmm. non violent. It, it, thing so you could it doesn't feel like uh, uncomfortable. No, like, I mean I got used to. I mean this. Uh, all of us have been doing it for so long, so it's just kind of like a habit. Now we train with it twenty four seven. Is it like a chip or something? Yeah, it's in it's it? like a pod. Oh, it's, it's like a pod. Yeah, oh, okay. you just slide the pod in, and it and it tracks everything, bro. That's crazy. So that's the only reason why you guys wear that. Oh, 100 percent. Oh man, I thought I, I, I don't know. They, they I, don't know. I, I thought it was hey, for a statement. You know, they like a what? I thought it was for a statement. Like hey, like guys can wear bras too. You know. I, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, thought, I thought that too, but I was like, what the fuck are they holding? Like, in make place? some yeah. straps with a little pouch or something, you know? Yeah, like, you know? Because yeah, like, I've seen that before. Like, or make like, it look like a bulletproof vest. Honest, like, honestly, know, it's, crazy. It's, it's crazy. Like, that question gets asked a lot, and most of the people don't know the real answer for it. And for huh. me, like, since I've been in I for so long, yeah. thank you for elaborating on for that. Sure. For so, when players wear that, that, it's called a catapult, if they wear that little bra, bra. it's for a GPS, it tracks everything, and we don't wear it just to hold up our. Our man, man boobs. I'm gonna gotcha. wear, wear one when I cut hair, so see how so many. You track you know? how much hey, I'm gonna hey, hey, just like gonna say much? rest 100. Yeah, percent right? They're gonna be like, bro, you, <laughs> you, need, to rest to, you need to go shit, run, bro. homie. Your ass been standing up for oh, nine shit. hours. <laughs> hey, so hey, Gio said he's gonna wear it when he's. Oh shit! He said after hours. Two rest. minutes. They're like, man, you, you went too long. You did, I, you did two minutes of cardio today. Your, your <laughs> most explosive. <laughs> your most explosive time. Was hey, two um, and a half in the car. And then uh, another quick, a quick question. So, since we're talking about like like chips and shit like that, right? Um, Funyuns, uh, Doritos. Uh, you know, you know how you know how uh, they can they can they can. Uh, they can detect how hard and how fast someone kicks a ball. Yeah. They don't. They don't use. They don't find out through those. Through they these find things. The pot. Yeah. They could track everything, bro. Oh, so they can. They know how power? hard you hit a ball. Yeah, they could track everything, bro. You can't even like. You can't even cough without them not knowing you coughed. 
It tracks okay. everything. Okay, all right. Like they have a hard. I don't. Player. I don't mean to. I don't mean to like name another player right now because this is your time right now. All right, but yeah. But, but like, you, you uh, could obviously put the thing too. There's another one. That goes I remember you boot. told me the other day you were like, "Hey, you know that? You know that the the uh, Chavez, the guy that kicked the free kick, he oh, had yeah, the yeah. strongest and fastest yeah, yeah. kick in, out in of the, the whole World Cup. Oh, yeah. How do they they they, they find out that well, through through the through the? I think partially through, through the ball too. Cameras and they have the bro. Like at that level, even at the World Cup, like. I'm telling you, everything is tracked in the I'm world. I'm pretty sure. Does the ball have a chip too or no? No, no, no. They probably have cameras. And I'm pretty sure they have anything. sensors, yeah, like yeah. radars in thinking. the net and shit. I mean, that, that new shit with the wall, bro, that shit's insane, oh, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah. Like, technology is it's getting so crazy with, like, especially sports because, like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, modified. It's like the baseball. They, they use the gun. So, why yeah. can't they use the gun with well, the yeah, soccer they, ball? They have, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're they right. have it probably like panels, like, on the side of the fields. And that tracks every ball that goes past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You're right. I would say that was probably the most accurate thing that could could track that. That's fucking crazy, bro. Like yeah, I always thought the balls had like a little oh, RFID too. chip in it, like top golf, like, on top like the golf, top yeah. golf balls, you know? Well, they honestly, track, like power that, and everything. Hey, but what if the balls don't even have a fucking chip? And yeah. it's what if it's sensors? What if it's just on the posts? Yeah. Or or like yeah, or mm, when you no, hit. That's a, that's a lot of balls. No, like, but what if? Oh yeah, that's at true. The same time. Because you know what I'm thinking true. is like if they do like I don't I have never heard a soccer ball have a chip or anything because. I just I'm just, pretty sure the impact could fuck it up, right? Like, yeah, or just like mm, well, you think the would, same thing as a would, golf ball. They would right? think yeah. it like it's kind of messing up like the, the rotation ball. of the yeah, ball or, or something, something like it, it would just change the dynamic or stuff. Off balance. Know. Do you yeah. do you remember uh the last on this last World Cup where uh, I think it was Japan versus Germany, was it? Remember when the ball went out almost all the way? Oh yeah. And, and they, then they and scored they the goal. They counted it versus Spain, yeah. Versus Spain? Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, German. we were watching it here. Yeah, Remember, yeah, we were, yeah. you were here too yeah. with me. We were watching it because of fucking, that call. Fucking. Hey, like, so, f- and the way I saw that shit, bro, that ball was completely out in my, no, like, no, yeah, I, in my, in my eyes, bro. Like, hundred percent. Okay, because we were all talking about this. If for in order for the ball to be completely out, it has to be hundred percent out. A hundred percent out. Yeah, yeah. So if, like, if, if that if, ball was hundred percent out, if it's fucking, like if the line is like skimming, skinning the ball. It's in. What? That the that's fuck? what the VR like rules are de- like declaring it as. Yeah. But like being honest, that occasion was very, very controversial because it's just like overall Because they're the ones that eliminated fucking and that's another thing. Like if imagine you're Spain Yeah, bro. That was a deciding moment for you to get knocked out the World Cup or not. Like yeah. imagine your country. Like if it was the US or Mexico, like come on. Oh yeah, know? for sure. Uh, I, it, that, it, that, I thought that was fucking lightweight yeah. sour. So bro. it becomes like, very it becomes very difficult and very like touchy subject with the VR. Yeah. So it's great for some technology to be in sports because it's like fair. Know, fair, but at the same time, sometimes it gets abused. So overall, like it just depends the situation. Yeah, like sometimes I think of it this way: like, fuck it, dog. Like back in the day, we didn't have that, and then we still figured it out. Yeah, but, exactly. You yeah. know, like, but uh, there was a client in here that made a made a great point where they were talking about it's good that technology's advanced like that to where it kind of holds the referees accountable for their for their calls as well. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, some referees, like at the end, when so the game's getting played, right? And say it's Japan and Spain, uh-huh. like I don't know if you guys know, but like the referee has to be from a different country. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But even then, sometimes you think about it. Like, say it's a Mexican ref and he doesn't like Japanese people. Uh huh. It it could become controversial because you don't know he doesn't like or he might not like a certain uh, country over another country. So that could come into play. So if the referee has some emotional decisions that he's making on the field that's unfair, that then can, it could it could it could ruin some some games. So it's yeah. good to have double or triple checks on some things, but. Overall, I think the more pauses in the soccer game, it becomes... Because think about it, soccer is the only sport out of all the sports out there that it's basically 45 minutes nonstop play. Like, every other team, something bad happens, uh, team's unorganized, uh, some players are having funky moments, they're not, they're not in rhythm, whatever. Pause, uh, you could ask a timeout, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could organize your team. Soccer is like, you get a game plan at the beginning of the game, you get a fixture in in halftime where things you know coach comes in and is like yo this is what's going on we need to fix this that and the third and then at the end of the game is a wrap so yeah. you you have to figure it out within the game you have to solve your own problems in the game but now with the, all these stops like you have a little bit more time to see what the coach is saying that and and try to figure out how to solve problems so i guess the more stops in soccer is kind of messing it up than the natural um 
the natural ability of like just figuring it out on the fly yeah, for yeah, players because yeah. now you're getting more chances to kind of get more information. Hey, so with that with that being said, with like stoppage and stuff like that, how does that work? So say if somebody falls down, gets injured, whatever, two minutes get taken away, and then like say another foul happens, another minute gets taken away. Is all that stoppage time just accumulated and added up? Yeah. To give extra time yeah so this world cup was actually tested to give more stoppage time because they they went through like all this like research and everything to see how much time is wasted and honestly there was a lot of time wasted and the teams weren't getting enough time at the end so if you notice this world cup there was there a was four, they, they added 14 because, minutes yeah there was always like eight nine ten twelve minutes and you're like wow we've never seen that before like that so they're testing to see try to give as much more play to the players and the teams mm -hmm. then because think about it every time the ball goes out of bounds every time the ball guy falls down or whatever like the referee has to stop his watch and start counting those seconds so mm -hmm. and then you add all those up towards the end but sometimes think about it stoppage throughout the game would be 10 minutes mm -hmm. And before it should be like, all right, we're only adding four at the end. Yeah, so yeah it's six minutes wasted. And then I seen that too. Like, uh, I think it was one of those games in extra time that I was watching, and they gave them like five minutes, and then something happened in extra time, and, and then, then they, they added more. another yeah. like four minutes on so top of that. Fuck, straight, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. it's a straight stopwatch. So like, when the ball's not rolling, that got kind of better at like stopping the watch and not letting the <sighs> clock run. Yeah, yeah. So it just kind of just becoming better at the adding, you know, within and, the game. And there's no timeouts in soccer, huh? Nah. None at all. What are what are your what are your thoughts on on this last uh god damn already 51 minutes? That's fucking insane, bro. That's crazy. I could fucking crazy. Um what are your what are your thoughts on this last uh, World Cup dog? Um like when it comes to fucking everything, the 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 final scores on 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 all games in general, like on on sub substitutions, on adding more time, uh, something that really fucking blew my mind. I saw a game where I think they did like eleven subs. I you forgot. Mean? Yeah, bro, there was like eleven subs. Uh, I think it was. I think it was uh, New Zealand or Croatia. One of those two. Wasn't New Zealand didn't make. Do, no, no, no. Do it was Croatia. Count as subs. Nah. Not which ones? Do injuries, injuries count injuries? as subs? Like, say if like they give, two people uh, get injured. It depends. Yeah, some some are subs. I think they have one emergency sub, if I'm not mistaken. Like, say you use up all, all because of, if you use up all your subs, then you because now it's five. But it used to be three, right? Yeah, but there's there's th so uh, if, <laughs> do not correct me if I'm wrong, but it's five, and then you have three blocks to make five subs. So you don't, you can't make five subs, like one, two, three. You have to make, you have three blocks to make five subs. So like in one block where you're making one sub, you can add two players in, three players in. But you have to, you have five subs in total. And then I think there's an emergency, f emergency sub just in case for concussion or something. What about, uh, what about, that's like, obviously. Because on, on this World Cup, I think uh, halftime subs didn't count. Am I right? No, they do count. Yeah, they do count. Damn, honestly, yeah, they, no, they count. All subs count, but I'm saying like, uh, I, that's time. For, for, yeah, because uh, I saw a game where they were saying that the team did like a couple subs. I saw, I forgot what game, what game it was, bro. But they did like 11 subs in total. Maybe it was like all together, like both mm, teams. Nah, and an or, or I don't, or even, but even that. That, well, that can't be in the World Cup because there's only five. Yeah. So, huh. It's only five like players to get subbed in at, at the whole throughout the whole. I gotta game. look into that, dog, because we were even talking about it here. There was. We were we were they were saying game. no 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 it was a World Cup yeah it was, it was a World Cup game. yeah because they they were I'm making tripping. they were making hella subs and then so they made their five subs and then in the halftime they made more subs the same team and I was like what the fuck and I guess they were saying because then, of uh, then I need to go look into the, oh, no. into the rules I need, yeah I, I, I need to check into that change so much stuff that honestly that shit is crazy yeah. but what do you what, what are your thoughts on the World Cup this 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 year or last year actually. Overall, I think there was more positives than negatives. Um, it was very different, you know, yeah, yeah. with all the changes with it being where it was this year, uh, the teams that competed. I think it was very, it was it was a thrill, you know. It was a lot of uh, upside, like where teams were beating other teams, you know. That's what everybody wants to see. You want to see underdogs get through. You want to see the favorites kind of get through. You want to have some shock, like Bar Brazil not make Brazil getting knocked out where everybody yeah. wanted them. Overall, I think it was a great World Cup. Uh I think the media was kind of um, twisting some stuff. Yeah. So unfortunately, some people were looking at it in the wrong way. But overall, I think it was very positive. I enjoyed it. I, I watched you, most of the games. So are you happy with the with the outcome? Yeah. Yeah. I, with, I, are you I happy wish, with 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 Argentina? I feel like 
it's a very touchy subject, you know, because I I respect Messi and Ronaldo and what they have done in yeah. soccer. I feel like people could stop should stop focusing so much in the debate of who's better. Obviously, everybody has their preference, and obviously, athletes will show you who's better and who's not. But at the end of the day, like if you like Ronaldo, you like Ronaldo. If you think he's the best, yeah, yeah. he's the best. You think Messi, but then when you put up stats, like they're different. They're different players from different positions throughout the careers i just think we should appreciate them more than compare them because we lose sight of of who they really are on the field and enjoy them when we compare them all the time yeah so and then once we retire we're like damn we had it good and we didn't enjoy it that much because we're just so focused on um comparing them from from what they did last year or the next year who many ballon d'oros have so that for me I, I stopped focusing on who's better i just enjoyed both of them and I just wanted at that time I wanted either Ronaldo or Messi to win it. You know, yeah, like, yeah, same because here. Because I feel like they gave so much to the sport. They deserve it. And they did. They did everything. They have won it all. So for soccer to finally be at peace, I think it was meant for one of them to win it. Yeah, you know. So either or, I think soccer's yeah. happy. I think for for Messi to win it or Ronaldo, like obviously people hate Messi, hate Ronaldo. But yeah. overall, the majority of people are are happy soccer yeah. fans that one of them won it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how, how that's how. I was gonna I was gonna ask you too, how do you feel about like so like at the end with France and Argentina when it came down to penalty kicks, do you feel like it, it should just they should just play it out and you know, last goal wins? Or do you kinda you like the penalty kicks? Uh um, like with the outcome? No, that's a good question actually, because a lot of people think penalty kicks are easy. They're, and they look easy. It's like a free throw, right? When people look at basketball as a free throw. Yeah. But like, okay, you could go shoot free throws, yeah. Go shoot free throws in an anti gym and you could shoot from ten, you make nine, right? Now add a crowd. Now add a final. Yeah, bro. Now add the pressure. Now like add, a add, the pre- dog. add the pressure of a country behind your back. So think about it. Like people, you get scared of talking on top of a stage with t- ten people in front of you. Yeah. Imagine trying to do something at the highest level consistently and have that much pressure on you. And I think like I was watching um, a pod. I mean, I was watching a documentary, and I think Luca Modric talked about it the best because he's been in very pressured moments, and he's like. Uh, I think uh, a couple of years ago, he, he had a PK in first country. And he's like, when you get there, the goal shrinks on you. It's a mental game. Like, yeah, people yeah, don't understand yeah. how much mental it is to kind of dish out all the pressure and dish out all the noise and focus on your objective at that point. And it is very controversial because a lot of players can't handle that pressure. Like, they can handle playing in the game. But when it comes to one shot and one opportunity, it's a lot. So some players get crucified because they're like, oh, you're a professional athlete, you can't make a PK. It's like, it's not just a PK, it's everything around it that comes into play. Yeah, fuck, So it's, under- yeah. it's understanding that. Like, if you have never played sports and you've never been in a position where it's it's one shot, one opportunity, everything's on the line, for little things, imagine how it is for, for that. You yeah. know, have your country in your back. Bro, just myself shooting a fucking PK back in the day for my, fuck for a, for a fucking... Exhibition for a fucking game or- for a fucking Aztecs league fucking <laughs> like game, bro. Like that shit was just so nerve fucking wracking. like nerve wracking, you yeah. know. So, I for for like for me, it's like all right, you play your ninety minutes and then you play your overtime, and then you 15, gotta do 15. that, and then you 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 guys both didn't fucking score. All right, fucking now it's time to just fucking straight up just peak. I think because. You could probably keep going. You, you, and like, it, you like PKs it, better? Yeah, because yeah, well, yeah. not better. I mean, I, I overtime then PK. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, but get, I mean, you want to give them the chance to do. You want to give them the 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 chance to do the overtime. Yeah. But if they don't score, you can give them more time, and it's we're gonna, gonna be gonna sitting here out, yeah. for three four like hours. It's gonna be like exactly, baseball. you know. But yeah. yeah, to answer your question, I was just trying to give some context to it. Yeah, I think the stru- the way it's structured is good, and I think people just like us professionals got to be practicing more to be in those environments mm-hmm. you know because it, it gets to that point because at the end of the day you could put it like this then why didn't you score in the extra time if you don't like pk so much if you think pk is so controversial mm-hmm. then you got 30 more minutes to score you you're if your team doesn't score in those 30 minutes then who are you to say that you shouldn't go to pks yeah because that's fair the, the, the other team defended well they did their job you know pks is just kind of like at a, that, a point at that flip, point it becomes a mental game. Like, who's ready mentally to take on this challenge? Yeah, I, my dad always, answer. my dad always told me this. Like, when when you have two great teams, like badass teams, bro, um, and none of them can score. At that point, it's not who's better, but who's gonna make a mistake. You know, exactly. like, who, like a, who's gonna make a mistake? Exactly. And fucking nobody makes a well, mistake. Just, in, fucking, the, let's just, just in the final, that France had a breakaway. Uh, extra time. Oh, it was time. Like France came like three minutes, right? Bro, three, no, it was literally the last minute. Oh, oh, and Mbappe killed that. it, bro. I, I remember that. Yeah, and the goalie blocked, and that was a moment like 
that was their opportunity Argentina, to seal it. Like if he blo- that goalie that blocked that shot, you know. Yeah, he deserves that moment. You know, yeah, fuck so Argentina yeah. deserves to go to PKs because if you have clutch moments like that, you deserve to go into PKs. And yeah, like, because France would have scored that goal, nobody would talk. You know, France wins, boom, everything. Yeah, but if your team's making big plays like that, you deserve to keep going. And yeah, Argentina fuck, yeah. was the better team in PKs because they were in PKs sooner. You know, throughout the World Cup, they were in those pressure moments. So I think they were, you know, the favorites to win the PKs. They kind of had it already, like, you know. Yeah, they were under that pressure already earlier on in the tournament. So when it came to the final, the, you know, they did their job and, you know, everything fell into place for them and they, they deserve what they got. Yeah. Hey, so what happens with PK? So say if Argentina and France both scored those five goals each. You keep going. It just keeps going? It, it's yeah. a limit. Oh, okay. So after five, then it becomes who misses. Yeah. So ah, okay, it goes okay. first five, you know. And then after the five... Everybody got to shoot on the team until the first person misses. Oh, so damn. the first okay. person to miss, so say like your team misses, I got to come up and score. And if they I make score, it, they win. It's a wrap. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you. I got you. So after the fifth PK becomes like a uh, death shot. Like yeah. This is a wrap. Damn, that's wild, bro. Okay. Hey, um, quick question, dog, before we get done, bro. It's fucking, I wish we can keep going forever, dog, because uh, I, I, you know, you, when, when it's a good podcast it just fucking flows you know so fucking naturally and so dope um but so th- this is just something that i'm that i thought right now um you as a defender right you're because you're a defender correct yeah okay when you when you're watching soccer you as a defender do you watch defenders most of the time or do you actually like watch the whole fucking the whole field and every single Every single, obviously, you do. You you watch everybody because you're studying the what you what you do, what you play and shit. But do you focus more on the defenders, or do you focus more like on the forwards? What is when you when you're watching soccer? What do you pay attention to yeah, most? When I was younger, I just watched it, you know, and I was uh-huh. just like enjoying the game. And then the older I got, and then the when I started getting to positions where I was competing against these professionals, and I was lacking some experience, I was like. I need to focus on these players that I'm playing up against or players that are doing it at the highest level. And that's when I started focusing on defenders. And I was like, what makes them the best? And what are they doing that I'm not doing? Or what little things can I learn? So then I started watching games, analyzing my position. Okay. You enjoy the game, but when you see players in your position yeah. do certain things and make it look so easy, like that's when you're, okay, let me see what he did a couple steps behind before he made that great pass or that great tackle. So you start studying and hit the position you're playing. Yeah. So early on, I would say my advice to young players is, and I liked on it a little bit, but watch as much soccer as you can. I know sometimes you don't want to watch it gets boring. You want to watch YouTube. You want to play video games. But if you really want to excel in your profession or what you do, the best Fuck thing yeah, is studying bro. film. Fuck yeah. And it's very hard. I'm not, it's not easy. It's not easy for me, but that's so important. You know bro. what, you know what you got to do. Like we all know what we got to do sometimes and we have it in our heads, but just like, get into it you know so it's just like that and then i got into it and i'm like all right and i sh- like start with things you like like i started watching all the teams that i liked and i was making sure that i was watching those games consistently in those big teams and teams i was wanting to play for and then uh more mls games when i'm in the mls and more games in mexico when i was in mexico to see what's the style of play so whenever my opportunity comes i was like i know exactly what to do or if i get put in this situation I could I could find the outcome of it. You yeah. Know? So that's when the older I got, the more I realized. Wish I was young. Wish when I was younger, I developed that mindset faster, so I could understand those positions. So when I was put in them early yeah. on, I'd probably excel a little bit faster because I would consider myself a late bloomer. Like, yeah. yeah, everything that came my way, you know, came a little bit late, and, and things weren't always mapped out the way I wanted to mentally. Yeah. But I started focusing, like I said, on the journey. Like I stopped caring about destination, and that's when I would say I started having fun with it more because I was. Because it's, it's funny because you always say, like, oh, I want this, I want that. And then once you get there, you're like, you're lost. You're like, okay, I got here. What's next? And yeah. Like, if you don't enjoy the the ride or the process with it, that's the most beautiful part. I think the destination is just like the cherry on top. Once you get in love with the process, and I started loving it. Like, I love working out. It became a habit, you know. It's just like waking up in the morning. Sometimes I didn't want to, but once I did there and I finished it, I was like, bro, I feel good. Let me get what's what's next. Let me get, let me go eat a good meal. Let me let me get my water in. Let me get my protein in. And it started becoming a habit. And then I'm just like, yo, this is this is my life. I, I like this. Yeah. And it became a habit. And then it's just like over over time, it just became who I was. Yeah. You know? I, I actually fucking, I, I listened to a podcast once with uh, LeBron James where he's telling uh, the other people in the podcast, he's like talking to them saying how 
a lot of us we we work so hard like super hard to get somewhere right like say for example me like i want to be a barbershop owner right i'm working my ass off i'm fucking working every day i fucking save money i do everything that i have to do and then he's like well how he said it, he was like, dude, I used to work so hard to become a basketball player and be the best that when I finally got the chance to be a basketball player, a professional basketball player, I was so stuck on getting here that I, I didn't know what to do once I got here, you know? And then he was like, fuck, then that becomes another learning experience. Like, now you got to maintain 100%. and you got to, you know, yeah. fucking keep growing. Now that you're a professional basketball player, then I need to be the best one, you know, yeah. or I need to, you know, I'll, I'll fucking work everybody else. And that's fucking crazy, bro. Like how you said that too, you know, that's that, that just goes to show me how much, how much fucking knowledge you have and what you're doing. Um, what, uh, what are your, what are your future? Like, what are your goals, bro? For the next couple of years, how old are you? 24, 24. Yeah. Um, right now you're, you're in what? Like, your free prime agency. no, no or, i don't or, but yeah, yeah you're you're a free agent right now but like you're when you're 24 years old as a professional soccer player yeah. like 24 is usually like you know prime time or yeah, yeah. you know 24, like 24 20 like between your, when you're 24 i would say to 30 is when you have you the like, most knowledge and you absorb as much information as in the sport and you have the experience and you just got to put it all into work yeah uh what are your goals like obviously you're a free agent right now but is there are you is there anywhere you would like to be like I don't know what's a, what's a, obviously you probably want to go fucking play in Europe. Yeah, yeah. pretty sure. Hundred percent. That's that's everybody's but goal. Let's say for right now, for like a short term goal, where would you like to be at next year or for the next team? If you have, or I don't even know if you can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I you can't, can't, I can't speak a lot about it because everything, you know, some I know that there's and contracts options. and shit. Yeah, yeah. Until everything gets kind of put on paper and everything, but yeah, I would I would like to challenge myself. I think I have this year and next year to gamble a little bit and just to bet on myself again. I've always done it. I've always done it early on, and I think sometimes you got to push out your comfort zone. I think the U.S. is my comfort zone a little bit. So if I have to make a big change next year to push myself and see how far I could take it, then I'm going to do it because that's that's the perfect time to do it. And I think right now I have no baggage, you know. Yeah. Um, And I could take these take these big steps and maybe it will be um, pay a lot of dividends in the future. So I'd rather take it now. So in a couple of years from now, I'm like, you know what? At least I did take the jump, you know. At yeah. least I did try it. And whatever comes my way, you know, God is always guiding me and always having, always having my path already made for me. I just need to stay the course. Just got to bet on myself and just keep chasing it. So as of now, I think I, I'm going to bet on myself this year and try to try to do something very different this upcoming year. Hopefully everything falls into plan. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Well, dog, fucking honestly, bro, like I wish you nothing but the best, dog. And in, in this upcoming season, I hope you end up in the fucking at the team that you really like. I hope you're happy wherever you go. You know, the team that you get to, uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to fucking do great. And like I said, I need to go see you play, dog. So as soon as you find out yeah, where you're yeah. going to go, bro, you need to let me know so I can fucking at least, you know, buy a fucking, or maybe these guys can yeah, go the with squad me. Gotta go. the squad you know, gotta go. fucking. I would go. Yeah, fucking. And my boy G. Hell yeah. G yes, oh, yeah, for Pop sure. You better G go, baby. We'll even you take Omatic with us and we'll Jeez. fucking vlog that whole shit. You know what I'm saying? We'll go watch you play, but at least. You know, let me know so that I could fucking, we could look into like the schedule and Yo, shit sure, in advance sure. and then maybe, you know, book something further out the fucking year and shit. But yeah, man, I fucking wish you nothing but the best and keep killing it, dog. You're fucking, you, honestly, bro, believe it or not, you, 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 uh, there's a lot of people out here that look up to you, you know, like you're younger than me, bro, but I look up to you because of the discipline, the, the, the determination that you have, bro. Like you don't just, you don't just come across professional soccer players, you know, fucking often out here on a daily fucking on your daily fucking life, you know? And I get to say that my homie and other, and other boys that are, you know, that, that are becoming homies of mine too, that, that they're, so, they're professional soccer players and you guys might be younger than me, bro, but I look up to you guys, you know what I'm saying? And I just fucking hope you do good. I know you're going to do good, bro. And thank you for coming out here and hanging out with us, dog. Hopefully next time you come back, fool, we'll, we could do this again, yeah, you know, we'll chop it up some yeah. more. Because honestly, bro, like we try to maintain the, the, the podcast within the hour just because, you know, that's like the more right. friendly, yeah, yeah. friendly time and shit. But um, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure we got a lot more to talk about. And uh, shit, we'll, we'll just, you know, cut we'll it. see what the people say. Yep. You know? yeah. yeah, let's I mean, see what they, they say. And hopefully too. we can fucking do it again, dog. And. Thank you for coming out, dog. Yeah, for man, real, for it's real. a pleasure having you up in here, bro. Hell yeah. yeah. For everybody out there, make sure you guys follow my boy. Um, what's your Instagram? Castor4. 
Caste4 on Instagram. Make sure you guys follow us. Ace of Fates Barbershop and Tattoos. Best one in San Diego. Polo Cuts says D. Manny Rocks with the Z. My boy, that, that Barber Cheapy. Cheapy. Baby. Let's get it. Oh, Matic made it. We yes, got my sir. boy. Uh, Papa, Papa Gio in the building, Papa baby. Gio, the, the guy with the freshest fitted. Yes, yes sir. sir. Hey, check in with my boy. All the time, baby. You already know what it is. Much love, y'all. We'll see you guys next week, baby. Peace. Yes, sir. Peace.